great hand clap of praise. As the praise team comes.
you, mighty God. I worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Can you give him a head clap of praise in this place? Hallelujah, Jesus. Have you ever been in a moment and all you could do was say the name of Jesus? And you say Jesus and you feel something start to shift in your atmosphere. Let's call on him today. Jesus, fill this house. Hallelujah. We worship you, mighty God. We worship you, Jesus.
beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a beautiful name it is, the name online and worshiping in your living room, does it just feel good to be in the house of God and worship with the brothers and sisters in Christ? Amen. And feel that freedom and praise and worship. What a tremendous feeling it is. And I look around uh, even this morning and I'm seeing more and more faces, uh, people we've been missing, been missing you and we understand taking uh, precautions during coronavirus pandemic, uh, but the more faces I see, uh, the more it just, brothers and sisters know, it just it just does me good to see you sitting there this morning, amen, amen. Sister Mia Britton, it's good to see you up here on the stage, amen. Montgomery can't keep you, amen, amen, and it, I try to call everybody, I'd miss somebody, but it's just so good each week to see more and more uh, faces, uh, being able to come back, and, and we're thankful for that. Having said that, we do understand that the uh, coronavirus is still a very real threat to people. It's still a very uh, major concern, and we want to take every precaution we can uh, to limit the spread of it, particularly here within our congregation. Uh, for that reason, this Wednesday night, I hate to lead with a disappointing announcement, but Hope Kids uh, will be postponed uh, for this Wednesday night. We had it last Wednesday night, and I know the kids just had a fantastic time, uh, but circumstances uh, have made it where we are going to postpone, and we'll see. We'll judge it week by week. Is that fair? Is that okay? Uh, we'll just be very cautious with it, and uh, kids, we haven't forgotten about you. We love you. Don't, don't we love our Hope kids around here? Amen. Amen. And, uh, but we do want to uh, be as safe as possible with that process because there's no greater treasure to us than our children. Amen. Uh, a couple other announcements we'll make very quickly. Uh, of course, you know that tonight, Brother Brian Kinsey will be preaching, ministering here at Living Hope. Uh, Brother Kinsey is the pastor over in Pensacola. And if you've never heard Brother Kinsey preach, well, tonight you need to make sure you're here and, uh, and hear what... Uh, what thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. I know he is going to bring a tremendous word from God for our church. And what better time uh, for, for him to have been scheduled. Scheduled literally months and months ago. And uh, uh, I'm just thankful for that. Uh, 
the tough thing for Brother Kinsey is he has to follow Brother Daniel Anderson this morning. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to what God has for us this morning. I, I, I feel a, a, a tremendous spirit in the house if we'll just relax. Amen. And let God do what God wants to do in this room. Amen. I believe it for great things. Uh, we're continuing our nightly prayer meetings uh, at the church this week. Thank you for all of you uh, who came out, whatever day you were able to make it. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday night from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, uh, the building will be open. We'll be either here in the sanctuary or in the fellowship hall as scheduling permits. And we just invite you just to come and pray. Just come and pray. Amen. More than anything else, uh, through the time of transition for living hope, we want to have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, and we encourage you to be here and praying with us this week. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring a very special speaker to the, to the podium. And y'all, she said she was nervous because um, she's going out to millions of people around the world on our live streams. <laughs> I told her. That is so funny. Good morning and praise the Lord. So this isn't going to be hard to do. I want you to sit there and think about it being like 90 degrees outside. You're sweating. And somebody comes up to you and brings you, not a cup, but a big glass. And it's empty. Okay. And then they come over and they put ice cube after ice cube after ice cube. Are you getting a little cooler? And then they come up and they pour fresh squeezed lemonade. And you take a big old sup of that. There's one word that comes to mind. It's refreshing, right? Just kind of refreshes you. Well, that's what I want to talk about just really quick to our ladies. Men, you can be refreshed too, but this is just for our ladies. So our ladies conference is coming up. And it's August the 21st through the 23rd, that weekend. And we're going to have a time of refreshing. Our theme this year is refreshing you. I want to read the scripture. It's Romans 15 and 32. And it says, so that I may come to you in joy by God's will and in your company be refreshed. So ladies, we're not going to just come and get refreshing ourselves, but we're going to refresh each other. And it's going to be a great time in the Lord of just getting that renewing and that refreshing, but also being there for each other. There's a lot going on in this world today, and I think we really need this. Um, registration is now opened, and there a link went out, I believe, this week, and there's also the link on our Beautiful Hope Ladies, refresh, uh, excuse me, Beautiful Hope Ladies Facebook page. But if you have any questions or concerns or have any um, difficulty with registering, just see myself or Sister Debbie, and we'll be happy to help you with that. There's also an option for purchasing dinner tickets because on that Friday night after service, we will be having a refreshing dinner. And then on Saturday, we will have split sessions. Uh, there'll be like a continental breakfast that morning. Um, we're going to have two fabulous speakers, Sister Danae Richards and Richardson and Sister Kristen Stafford. So it's going to be very exciting. Uh, the registration also has an option for t-shirts. So go online, ladies. Register for the conference, uh, register to purchase your dinner ticket and your t-shirts, and just look for an exciting and refreshing time in the Lord. Man, amen. I did tell Sister Sharon that depending on how she did, we'd work on her contract after church about being on TV like this, so... Uh, no, what an exciting event coming up. And uh, gentlemen, if you're interested in getting your glass of lemonade and maybe stealing a sandwich, you can see Brother Kim Gorham. He has taken uh, volunteers to help serve that weekend. Amen, gentlemen. That's all right. Uh, you can help serve our ladies and uh, have a great time uh, volunteering and doing that. Amen. Uh, we're going to receive our tithes and offering this morning. Of course, we're not passing the plates uh, due to social distancing. Uh, but we do want to give you the opportunity and give you that reminder to give this morning. Amen. And uh, we want to recite our tithers pledge uh, today. You haven't forgotten it, have you? Okay. 
Let's recite the tithers pledge together. Upon the authority and by the orders of your word, I give cheerfully today, and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my first fruit, my tithe, into your storehouse. I understand that every good gift comes from you. As I give, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. I shall be blessed going in. I shall be blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is anybody still living by faith right now? Still giving to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We uh, Thank you for your continued giving. Thank you for... Uh, uh, responding to the giving links that we send out to text to give. There's also a box out there in the uh, lobby if you'd like to place an offering in there as you leave today. Amen. Is it okay if we just worship just a little more before Brother Daniel comes and ministers the Word of God? Do you still have a little worship left in your spirit? Do you still have a little praise buried down in there that you haven't quite let out yet? Do you know that the name of Jesus is worthy to be praised? He's worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah. Would you lift your voice all over this room? Hallelujah. Treasure rich 
honored and adored and you alone will be glorified and praised and you alone will be honored and adored worthy hallelujah my God is holy and he deserves everything that I have he deserves everything that I can give him all of my worship and my praise unto the one who sits on the throne unto the one hallelujah who has all power above him there is none above beside him there is none today hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated in the house of the Lord on this on this Sunday morning. Hey man, I am so good, glad to be here. It is so good to be in the house to feel the freedom to worship in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said amen. 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 I, uh, I am so glad that I'm speaking this morning, that I'm preaching, because I don't have to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry that you have to sit there and wear, uh, wear a mask, but uh, I'm not wearing a mask, and thank God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. As Dad says, it's, it's an ounce of prevention, right, worth a pound of cure. Uh, I'm also glad I'm speaking this morning, because I'm speaking first, and then Brother Kenzie can 
coming, and uh, he, he's the he's number four spot right in the in the lineup. Right, he's uh, he's batting cleanup, so he can he can come and, and bat cleanup tonight. I am looking forward to tonight. I've been uh, looking forward to this morning uh, for the past couple of weeks, just knowing that God has something for us. Uh, even last week, uh, Brother Jeremy, uh, row, 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 uh, keep on rowing. And then Wednesday night, tagged right into it, uh, Brother Robertson uh, with keep on walking. And uh, I, I told him I've used those uh, phrases this week uh, just to encourage myself and the Lord. Just keep on walking, keep on rowing, keep doing what you're doing, keep, keep praying, keep worshiping. Amen, amen. That's the best thing that you can do right now as a church, as a people, hallelujah, in this time, in this environment. Amen. Hallelujah. I do want to clarify a little bit on the uh, announcement that Sister Sharon made. Uh, just so you know, that is going to be inside. That is not going to be in the 90 degree heat that she uh, talked about. Uh, that will be an indoors event. So I, I didn't know if there was any question. I didn't want that to be, I didn't want there to be, there will be lemonade, right, right. Sister Sharon, you'll have to make that happen. Amen. God is good today. God is good. Uh, just wanted to uh, bring bring uh, a little subject, and I, and, uh, I will try not to be uh, terribly long, uh, but as I was studying, as I was moving, uh, I believe God has a word, and I want to bring up uh, today our subject, if I can title it, Bring it on. We've kept rowing. We've kept walking. Now it's time to bring it on. I'm going to go to 1 Samuel, read chapter 17 and verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And that's all I'm going. That's, that's as far as I'm going right now. So, so we'll, we'll leave that right there. So you know the story, right? David and Goliath. We've heard it from when we were kids. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to bring that out today. But the phrase, bring it on, right? The phrase, bring it on. You've heard it before. You've probably even used it before in competition, playing in the backyard, in park, in fights. Come on, bring it on. What you got? Right? It's a phrase that we use. There's something about this phrase that brings up an attitude within you. Come on, I'm going I'm to try to help us this morning. There is an attitude that comes along when somebody says something to you and you retort back with, oh yeah? Bring, bring it on, right? It, it, it brings up, you can't, you cannot, before I break that, you can't say that statement and it not elicit some sort of attitude within you, not bring up some emotion within you, right? Am I right, Caleb? You can't just say bring it on and, and not have any feeling about that whatsoever because what happened Previous to that, that elicited that emotion, elicited that feeling to provoke that response. There's something, it's, it's a certain attitude. How many of us has used that phrase, even growing up? Maybe, maybe even this week on your job. That's pretty intense if you use it this week on your job. But... You remember when you used that phrase. Can you remember the feeling that you had when you said that? Some of us, we have to dig back a little bit. But when this phrase is used, something has happened that has elicited this reaction. Some sort of situation, some remark, some, some uh, circumstance. Somebody has said something or done something. All right? 
Brother Jones, I don't know if you're here, uh, Brother Michael Jones. If I say to you, I can drive that golf ball further than you can, <laughs> I guarantee he's going to say, oh, yeah, bring it on. Brother Tony, if I told you, hey, I can, drive, I can drive that golf ball further than you can, oh, yeah, well, let's see what you got. Brother Sims, if I said I can catch more brim than you Dad, if I said if I was a better fisherman than you, maybe that was a bad example. He, I don't know if he would say that or not. Oh, yeah, son, bring it, bring it all. Brother Daryl, if I said something to you, well, let's just take this outside. <laughs> Brother Darrell would say, oh, yeah, well, let's just bring, that, bring it on. Let's step outside. Not afraid of that challenge. Something has happened. Something has challenged us, and we rise up with those, that phrase, and we rise up in our spirit, and we rise up with that attitude that says, oh, yeah, the challenge has been accepted. Bring it on, whatever you got. Whatever you think you've got, whatever you think you can do, whatever you think will happen, go ahead and bring it on. Challenge has been accepted. This phrase says, I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you came with or how you approach me. It says, I don't care if you think you're better than me or think you've already run. This phrase, this phrase says, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know what I'm capable of or even who has my back. You don't know. I am on the winning side. You are defeated and you just don't know it yet. That phrase says, you don't know who you're dealing with. I've got the mighty God behind me. I've got the Savior with me. I've got the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he has my back. Challenge has been accepted. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a phrase that, that elicits an attitude and an and an, a reaction to the situation. We go back to our story. David was sent by his father to take food to, to his brothers. And the scripture says, the scripture says, take these ten cheeses. Honey, if you bring me food while I'm in the battle, bring me some beef jerky or something. Don't, don't just bring me some cheese. At least give me some sausage or venison. Or give me a little meat in the substance. The Bible said it brought ten cheeses. Maybe you okay with ten cheeses. But I, I need a little bit of Jack Link's beef jerky or something. But David was sent by his father to, to, to bring some food, cheese, to, uh, to his brothers in battle. It says when he got there, Goliath had come out as other times before, to present the challenge to, to the children of Israel. And this is what the challenge was. Put that next verse up there, boy. 26. And it says, uh, that's, not, that's not it. He would step out onto the battlefield, and this is what he would say, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Just flat out, I would, de I would defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. He had been doing this for 40 days. 
He had been coming out presenting himself to the armies of Israel for 40 days. He had been challenging the armies for 40 days. It wasn't just a one-time occurrence. It wasn't just a, a single instance that he had stepped out on the battlefield. It was going on over a month's time that he was saying, you got to do something. I'm, I'm challenging just not one person. I'm challenging the whole army of Israel. He had been doing that for 40 days. The Bible says, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. David witnessed that. When David got to the battle, he witnessed that Goliath had stepped out onto the battlefield. He had witnessed that the men, when they heard the challenge that was issued by the Philistine that they were so afraid and they went and they hid themselves. Now verse 46. 26. The next verse I gave you, whatever that one was. It says, He turned to the men around him and he asked these questions. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God. What I read into that scripture, what I read into those words is, Mr. Mr. Goliath, yes, you have stepped out and you have issued a challenge, and I am the one to step up to that challenge. I am the one. He says, who is this uncircum- I can read anger in his voice. I can read that attitude in his voice as it is written in the scriptures there. Who is this guy? Who does he think he is? That he would challenge. That he would step out to defy the, the armies of the living God. Does he not know who we are? He asked the question, who is I can hear the attitude. It was rising. Who does he think he is? Rising up with him. Does he not know the God that we serve? If he only knew who he was challenging. The problem was the people, the armies of the living God didn't know who they were serving. They had forgotten what had happened in the past. They had forgotten what God had already done for them. They had already forgotten the, the battles that they had already won so that when the Philistines stepped out, they were afraid of what this one Philistine. David, bring it on, Goliath. God has my back and I will not back down. That was his attitude. Bring it on. You issued a challenge today, right now, right here, I accept the enemy would dare to challenge you today. Come on. The enemy has dared to step out on the, on the battlefield of where you are. The, the enemy of your soul has stepped out and is issuing a challenge to you. He would try to pressure you. He would try to make you back down from where you are right now. He would try to back you into a corner and to cower at your circumstance. And some of us have fallen, fallen for that trick. Some of us have fallen into that trap that he is putting in front of us. I got to be honest. I felt myself even falling into that. Where it was, it was where this challenge was being laid out circumstances were laying out there. And instead of knowing and putting my confidence in what God can do, I felt myself beginning to back down. I felt myself beginning to be engulfed in, into that, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to turn. I don't know what's going to happen next. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. You can feel yourself being engulfed in, in almost a, a, a depression or a blackness that would seem to overwhelm you, to seem to block out your vision of who God is, to block out 
who you, your, your vision of what God can do. The enemy of your soul would love to get you into the corner and make you cower at His presence when there is no power in Him. There is nothing in Him that can make you back down. And I'm here to challenge you today. You have to stand up. You have to make your presence known. You've got to make your declaration known before the, before the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He would try to pressure. He would try to back you into the corner to cower at your circumstances. But Brother Hutchinson, that attitude rises up within us no matter what the circumstance. No matter what happens, I'm still going to worship I saw you run the aisles last week. Uh, I'm still going to praise him. Uh, uh, He still deserves my glory. He still deserves my honor no matter what's happening. No matter what the circumstance is in my life. My God is, uh, my faith, my trust, my confidence is in the one uh, who holds. uh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to run the aisles. I'm not ashamed to worship. I'm not ashamed to declare that my God is the King of kings and He's the Lord over everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Clap your hands unto Him. When the Spirit gets loose and and the anointing hits, hallelujah, you've got to show it. You've got to demonstrate in your worship. Challenge accepted. I felt it when you did it last week. Challenge has been accepted. Bring it on. Doesn't matter what the challenge is. It doesn't matter who it is that has stepped out to challenge the people of God, the children of God, the children, the armies of the living God. Challenge has been accepted. Bring it on today. Hallelujah. The Spirit spirit rises up in me that despite what may be happening around me, I will not, I will not, I will not back down. I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not give in. I will not go back to where it used to be. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody here today. Step up to the challenge that has been presented. Bring it on. You've got to let that spirit engulf you. That spirit rise up in you. I will not. Living hope, we will accept the challenge. Bring it on today. Bring it on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The anointing comes and brings with it a boldness. When, that, when that, that spirit hits, when the enemy tries to come and back you down, and that spirit rises up within you, that anointing comes and brings with it a boldness that makes you stand in the face of adversity. Hallelujah. It makes you stand when things aren't going just right. It makes you stand. Hallelujah. When you think the odds are stacked against you, it makes you stand regardless of what is happening. It makes you stand. Hallelujah. With a confidence and a boldness. When David went out to meet Goliath, you come, he said, You come to me with a shield and a sword. The epitome of, of warfare, the epitome at that time of battle but he said it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you came with I came to you in the name of the Lord it doesn't matter what you showed up to battle with enemy devil it doesn't matter what you brought to the battlefield I came uh, with my Jesus Uh, I came uh, with the Lord of hosts Uh, I came with the mighty God Uh, hallelujah I came uh, he has my back Uh, you don't know who it is that came with me I came with the one who made heaven and earth. I came, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't care what you came to battle with. I have the Lord on my side. Come on, bring it on, somebody. I don't care what the circumstances dictate. I don't care what my job says. Uh, Hallelujah. I don't care what that family situation looks like. Uh, Go ahead and bring it on because I've got Jesus with me. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got the Lord on my side. It's that anointing that stands strong in spite of what you're going through with a confidence of who you serve. My God in whom I serve. Hallelujah. Man, I love to hear the organ. Organ play. Especially when somebody's playing along with the preacher. My prayer is that we would get somebody. Come on. Come on. God would send Brother Robertson. We're, we're going to bind together, brother. Me, me and you, if it ain't me and you, we're two or three, right? Sister Debbie, where are you? Come on, I, I know you're with me. I feel you, I feel. You know when that, when that organ, when that organ runs up to that high note, wham, wham. Hey. And, uh, you know, something starts moving. Right. Make you, oh yeah. When the when the organ uh, kind of mimics the 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 pastor, right, right, or the the preacher says, "God said, let there why why let there be light." Oh why why? Poor example of the organ, right? That's exactly why we need an organ player. And the shouting shoes comes out, right? Ladies, kick off the shoe. You know, you know what I'm saying? Shouting shoes come out. But no matter how much I love the organ, no matter how much as it accompanies the preacher, that's not what brings the anointing. The music is not what brings the anointing. Come on, somebody. As much as I want to hear the organ play, as much as I want that to be a part of this church, the anointing comes when you spend time in the Word. When there's a church that spends a, a time on their knees, the anointing comes when you spend in the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. It's not an organ. It's not an instrument. Hallelujah. But the presence of the Almighty God comes, hallelujah, from spending time on your knees in prayer in the presence of Jehovah. My God, cover us with your anointing. Let it fall on us today. Hallelujah. The enemy has tried to keep you out of the anointing. The enemy has tried to keep you out of the presence of the Jehovah God Almighty. Challenge accepted. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Step into the anointing. Step into the power of his might. Hallelujah. Let us be led by it. Let us be overshadowed by it. Thank God for his anointing. Thank God for his anointing today. Hallelujah. It, wasn't, it was the anointing that caused the writers for, to say, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Men, if I can issue a challenge to you today, take your wife by the hand and, and declare in your home, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For me and my house, we will have the anointing. Hallelujah. For me and my house, I shall declare the works and the glory of God. For me and my house, it was the anointing that caused these words to be penned. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. It was the anointing that caused Paul to say, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Hallelujah. I was in the Spirit. It was the anointing that says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. you got to let that anointing overshadow you today that you would stand up and say, oh yeah, bring it on. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It doesn't matter what you come with. It doesn't matter what it is. Hallelujah. But i got the Lord on my side today. Hallelujah. Greater is he. He calls Paul and Silas to say, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. 
rise up and walk. That's what the anointing does. That's where the anointing happens. Hallelujah. That signs and miracles and wonders would follow them that believe in the Holy Ghost where the anointing is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. David knew when he faced the giant, that was not the first time he had faced adversity. The enemy that stands before you today, and I'm not talking about me. Where's our, where's our counselor when we... David knew when he faced a giant, this was not the first time he had faced adversity. Or had, his, or had been challenged. You see, there had already been a lion and a bear experience in his past. He had already built his confidence that when he faced Goliath, he would say those words, I come to you in the name of the Lord. It was because he had already faced adversity. It was already, he had already had victories in his past. Church, we've, we've got some victories under our belt. We've come through some things. He had already been through some stuff. We, we've already had a lion experience. We've already had our bear experience. When the enemy would creep in and challenge you, you've got to remind I've already been victorious. You've got to remind yourself. You've got to pit, pull yourself up and say, I've, I've already been victorious. Yeah, yeah. I encourage myself in the Lord to say that if the Lord is on my side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've already come, overcome so much. Church, we have already overcome so much that we would say, who would defy? Who would defy the armies of the living God? Who is it? Who do you think you are that you would come against living hope, Sarah Land? Who is it that you think you are that you would come against the people of the living God? You may come at me with this circumstance, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. Somebody say, bring it on. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We look at Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18. We look at Elijah, he had that same attitude. That who do you think you are? That let's really see what you got attitude. 18 chapter 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the people answered Him not a word. How long? He's, he he put forth a question to the people of God and said, How long are you going to try to serve two masters? You got to pick one. You got to choose one. Hallelujah. The people were going back and forth between serving God and serving Baal. If I've come to say anything today, living hope, there is no time to waffle between who you will serve. Either get in the ship or get out. There's no hanging over the side trying to decide. There's no hanging over the side trying to decide whether I should stay or should I go. Should I be in the church or should I be out of the church? Uh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, you got to get in and you get in with everything you've got. There's no in between. Uh, God said I would either that you were hot uh, or cold, uh, but don't be uh, anywhere in the middle. I will spew you out of my mouth. Uh, there's no hanging out in the middle. Get in or get out. There's no dilly-dallying in the middle. Throw that official term out there. Dilly-dally. God has made it clear. We've heard it. In this sanctuary, this ship is moving on. Sister Debbie, this ship is moving on. It's sailing on. This is the time to declare. This is the moment. This is the day. With everything that's within you. Hallelujah. I will serve the Lord. 
Elijah said, let us offer sacrifices to our God and whoever answers with fire, that will be the, the God we will serve. And I'm sure that you're familiar with the, with the story. He was, he was saying, what have you got today? What have you got What have you got? He knew and had confidence that God, the God he served, knowing he would answer. He had confidence in what he was saying. Later in the chapter, uh, verse uh, 27. Don't put it up there just yet. Aha. Gotcha. Take it in. Okay. I'm not ready for that one yet. Later Later in the chapter it says, Elijah mocked. He mocked them. When he put the challenge out to the, uh, the prophets of Baal, it says later, he said, as it mocked them. You ever talked a little smack during a game? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you ain't got nothing. Man, you, you ain't got nothing. Jeremy, what's, what's one of those phrases that you use? When, when you played basketball with. <laughs> was that it? Was that? Was that? Caden said he, that was, the phrase that he used was, I'm tired. <laughs> You ever talked a little smack during the game, right? Did a little competition to game night? Families? <laughs> y'all, y'all got a little... But that's what he was doing. <laughs> I know Brother Tony knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes, sometimes playing Brother Benny, playing softball. We talked about it the other night. Challenge, talk a little smack. Verse 27, now I'm ready for that. Oh, it's on your time, my bad, my bad. He said, at noon, Elijah mocked, cry louder. Maybe he didn't hear you. For he is a God, either he's talking, can't can't talk and listen at the same time. He's not that kind of guy. Or he is pursuing. Or he is in a journey. Maybe he went on vacation. Or pre-adventure he sleepeth. You got to do something else. Come on. He he was talking a little... Maybe he's on a trip. Maybe he's sleeping. The victory was had because Elijah declared. And later on, and you read on, and it says that Elijah poured water on. And he, and he almost took it to a point that it seemed like the answer was going to be impossible. But victory was had because Elijah dared to believe that God would do exactly what he said he would do. He be- dared to believe in a God in whom he served Hallelujah, and I'm closing today. The battle over the Philistines was won because David dared to believe in whom he served. David's own brothers told him he wasn't ready. David's own brothers told him, you can't do it. They did not have the confidence in David to perform. David's own brothers, the king told him he wasn't ready. So not just his brothers, but the king told him. But he knew God had taken care of him before and he knew God would take care of him again because he knew that he had the blessings and the anointing of God on his life because he knew that what he had come through the victory was only a matter of time the victory as we stand today hallelujah the victory didn't come from the mighty king Saul it didn't come from the mighty warriors that were there It came from a man that was anointed of God that had the attitude, you don't know who you're messing with. It came from a guy that said, it doesn't matter what you come to the battle with, I came with the Lord. He was just crazy enough to believe that God would deliver the people, hallelujah, out of the hands of the Philistines. He was 
able to believe the victory came because of a man that was anointed. God has prepared our future because He has brought us through our past. God has prepared us for our future because of our past trials and our past victories. I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. I challenge you today, whatever you are going through, I challenge you today, what are you going to do? How will you respond to your circumstance today? Knowing that God is behind you. Knowing that God is in control of everything. Knowing that God has already brought you through. What are you going to do? What are you made of today? Are you going to accept the challenge? I challenge you. Lift your hands right now in this place. The enemy wants to keep you bound up. He wants to keep you cowering in fear. Cowering in the unknown. But you have to get into the presence of the Almighty. Lift your hands right now in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Step out of the ordinary. Somebody step out into the anointing today. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in this place right now. Lift your voice right now. Hallelujah. Let the cry of the people go up before the throne of grace. Let the cry of the people go up before Him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any. He's speaking to somebody in this house right now. Yield to him. Yield to his spirit. Hallelujah. Hear the voice of the Lord as he speaks to you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any. Jesus. 
Jesus is on the winning side. Accept the challenge today. Come on, bring it on today. Then what today? Who can stand against us? Who Hallelujah. You got to step into the presence of the Almighty. You got to step into His anointing and you got to come out swinging. You got to come out with the challenge accepted. You got to step out of the ordinary. I'm striving to be what God wants me to be. I'm striving to be everything. Let the Spirit get in you today to say, bring it on. Bring it on today. Let this resonate in your heart. Let it resonate in your spirit. Hallelujah. One more time, lift your hands to God. Lift your voice uh, and cry unto Him one more time as they sing. My God is greater. He is holy. Hallelujah. He is other. Our God is healer. Awesome and power. Our God. You gotta keep walking, you gotta keep rowing, you gotta, you gotta step out, hallelujah, by faith, knowing that God has your back. Hallelujah, you gotta step out knowing, hallelujah, where God is taking us, that's where He's leading us. We are following after Him through the anointing and through His Spirit. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Lord bless you today. So good to see all of you, all of our guests. Amen. So glad that you are here with us. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Amen. Lord keep you this week. Amen. Go on your way. Turn to somebody and, and wave to them as you leave. You are dismissed. The Lord bless you.